And today we're gonna to be working on the next project, which is we're adding trellises, we're adding vines, we're gonna be adding big, beautiful blooms, and we're gonna go vertical. Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? Me, in my garden, well, we're taking this chaotic front yard and transforming it into the cottage garden of my dreams. So in the huge garden project, here's where we're gonna be focusing today. We're gonna to be focusing on these two walkways. So project four and project five, which will be the trellises. So let me show you those spaces first. So this is what we'll call project four, AKA the Eastern walkway or what will become the Eastern trellis. So you can see the project for the garage. It's looking good. It's doing its thing. And here we have, and you might have something similar. We have a walkway that circles to the side of the house. Over the years, we've had a couple different designs for this area, but actually this area used to have a trellis right here, which is the inspiration for the project. But that might get you asking, but Jacqueline, if there was a trellis, why isn't there a trellis today? Well, long and short, a little thing called Hurricane Ian wiped it out. But for the focus of this project is we are gonna be doing this little strip right here and we'll be dealing with this little section here. We're not gonna go around the side of the house. We're just gonna stay in this area where the trellis is gonna come through, plus the base of the trellis. And so you can get an idea, of course, that's where the Eastern trellis is over there beyond project three. And of course, here's project one, project two, and bam, here's gonna be project number five, which is the Western trellis. Now you might be looking here and going, wow, that trellis is already in place. Why do we need to do anything? Well, this trellis is very, very much falling apart. It is old, it's dilapidated, and well, this is the biggest problem, is the legs are in general not attached anymore to the ground and only these T-posts are holding it up. So we have to replace it one way or the other. I'm not really sure if you guys can tell how much of a lean this actual trellis has, but it has like a huge lean. It should be straight like this, but it's actually leaning like this because three out of four legs are completely detached. So really this project is about replacing what once was and fixing what's very much broken. So that brings us to what are the ideas? What are some of the things that we should consider as we think about not only the trellis, but which vines that we might wanna do? So let's go and let's start thinking about this for planning. Now you may say, but why vines? Vines, there are so many amazing ones. Honestly, there are a ton of vines that have big, bold blooms. And it's a like you can just create a wall of that bloom, which may be harder with other plants like wildflowers or shrubs. Vines can bring a lot of color to a compact space. And the cool thing is, is that you can have a lot of big blooms without actually eating up a lot of your garden. So for all of you who have really small spaces and you've seen some of these shrubs that put out big, big flowers and you're thinking to yourself, I wish I could, but I just don't have the space. Vines can be one of the ways that you can bring them in. It's because the vines at the ground level maybe take up a two foot by two foot space, which is not that much, or you can even put them in pots sometimes. And then you can run them up and then you have like a whole wall just covered, just covered and covered with these giant, gorgeous blooms. And that's the other thing is while I'm gonna be focused on arch trellises, there are lots of types of trellises. You have everything from of course, arch trellises, but you also can have things like flat panel trellises and conical trellises. There are probably other types of trellises, but those are kind of the three main types. Now, because we're doing a cottage garden, and of course I'm going over walkways, we need to go up and over and think arch trellis. Now there's two types of arch trellises that you usually see. You actually have like actually an arch. And then we have more of, I'll call them like the per pergola style trellises. Those are kind of the two main styles. Now for me, when I'm thinking cottage garden, I feel more arch. The pergola style to me, I think fits really well with tropical gardens. For me specifically, with where we're gonna be placing these, we don't wanna do a pergola style because the actual distance between the edge of that trellis and the edge of the roof leaves very little space and makes it very easy for vines to jump from the trellis to the gutters. And you don't wanna ruin your gutters or your roof line because you put a trellis too close. So by doing an arch trellis from just a practical standpoint, that just creates more space between the edge of the roof line and the trellis. Next up, we need to consider, if you're into this idea, you wanna consider materials. There are kind of three main materials that we can get trellises in. One is wood, two is metal, and three is like a PVC, think like those um, PVC panel fences, that kind of material. Now for me, where I live in the world, uh, wood is not a great idea. I live in Florida, there are termites, 
all the time in Florida. That combined with how humid our environment gets, how wet it stays overall, like wood just breaks down really, really fast, which brings us to metal. Now, as we saw, the metal trellis over here is collapsing. But if you kind of notice behind me, I have some cattle panel trellises. Why one, why not the other? So when it comes to metal, it really all has to do with what materials. If you're gonna be dealing with metal out in the world, there's two materials you would wanna consider, aluminum or steel. Other materials, they're just gonna rust so fast that it's not worth your money. Now, when it comes to aluminum, you know, this is really gonna depend on what you're thinking about growing on it because aluminum, because it's so flexible, you could have like a smaller, lighter plant. Like if you were into vegetables, like a tomato or a bean plant that you're gonna plant and then replant, you're not, you shouldn't be as worried about an aluminum structure. It should be able to handle the weight as long as it's got the right thickness. But when we think about cottage garden, a lot of the plants that we're thinking about for vines are ones that we're gonna plant this year and they're gonna grow and grow and grow year after year, which means that potentially we're gonna have a lot of weight on them. So aluminum is potentially not the right thing for us. Now when it comes to steel, of course steel is more expensive than aluminum. And with steel, we need to make sure we have like the right type of coatings or a galvanized type steel, like what we have for these cattle panel trellises. In general, a lot of the metal trellises online, like uh, I, I get really concerned very quickly about the materials. And because again, where I live in Florida, <laughs> if I don't wanna go with something like a cattle panel trellis, if I wanna go with one of these like really cute designs to fit in a cottage garden, well, metal, it just like, it gets really questionable. We just, it's just everything just like, it rusts so fast. So a couple options you have is one, you could do a cattle panel trellis. And I have a video where I did these ones. Pro for these type is that they are really economical. I would say the biggest con is actually two cons. One, they don't really have like the cottage garden vibe. But honestly, if you, depending on what type of vine you get, I don't know if that matters because once you get them covered with a vine, like, I don't know if you could see with that other trellis, like most of the time we couldn't even see the design on it. The Jasmine covered it completely. So it might not matter what it looks like underneath. Like once you get it established, you get the vine on there, like who cares? I think the bigger challenge and what I found as a challenge is depends on where you live in relationship to where you can get the materials. So I live in an urban environment. I got this stuff from Tractor Supply. In that video, like you can see, it was quite an adventure to go out and get the materials. Building them so easy, like not complicated at all. They've made it through multiple hurricanes. Totally recommend it if this is something you wanna do. But since that's not really an option for us today, <laughs> what I'm gonna be doing this time is I'm actually gonna be testing out more of the PVC style. This is basically, when it comes to Florida, if you want a fence that survives, everyone does the PVC type. You either do the chain link, galvanized steel <laughs> stuff, which is very industrial looking, or you do the PVC style fence. And they tend to last really, really well. They're made of plastic basically, but there's a very heavy duty plastic. So we're gonna try that. We're gonna see how that goes. So that gets us through what type of trellis. But now the question is, what vines? What vines should we put on there? So first off, one of the vines I knew I was gonna put on there is already there. It's waiting, it's waiting for a trellis. Ever since Hurricane Edian, it's just been sitting there growing and that is coral honeysuckle. South Florida, Central Florida, North Florida, all the way up to Virginia is the native range for coral honeysuckle. It's got a huge, huge range. It can deal with a bunch of different environments. If you live in the colder areas, of course it will die back in the winter time, but it just comes back as long as it's established. In Florida where I live, it is green all year round and it can bloom most of the year, especially like in the zone 10. So we're doing coral honeysuckle. And, 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 if you love hummingbirds, let me just say, coral honeysuckle, coral honeysuckle, great choice. The other vine we used to have over there was the Maypop passion vine, which has huge, beautiful, purplish flowers, gorgeous. We love this plant. The challenge with Maypop passion vine is it likes to send out runners feet and feet away from it. So buyer beware with this one. You put this plant in and you're gonna have vines popping up two feet away, five feet away, 20 feet away. Yes, I have a neighbor who has it in their yard and you can see it popping up in the next neighbor's grass. Now, having it on that side of the house, my neighbor, Mr. Cliff, who also loves, 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 loves wildflowers, could care less. <laughs> he finds it adventurous and fun. 
So it's not as big of a deal, but I have a way around this because there's another vine that's existed in the area, but not on the trellis, but it has been really wanting to get on the trellis. And I've been wanting to get this in a better spot because it needs more sun to be able to bloom significantly. And that is ocean blue morning glory or blue ocean morning glory. I always forget which way it goes, but that plant has gorgeous, big blue blooms. And one of the things I liked with the old trellis is I love that purple coral combo. And I think, you know, we'll go a little bit more blue purple, but being able to have a morning glory that's blooming most of the year, even a lot of the chunks of the winter time, I think is gonna be so beautiful. So, so beautiful. I don't need to worry about runners popping up like 20 feet away. If you ever have had coral honeysuckle growing, you will see that that plant tends to be very top heavy. So, so having something at the base to kind of fill in. Also, if we're attracting butterflies to the area, why not have more butterfly food? Narrow leaf yellow top puts out hundreds of thousands of tiny yellow flowers. Bees love it, butterflies love it, birds love eating the seeds. You will know this because if you buy one of these and it flowers, you will start having it all over your yard because the birds will take those seeds and redistribute it everywhere, like everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So buyer beware on this one. Do so I feel comfortable putting it on this side? Cause again, Mr. Cliff does not mind. <laughs> it's spreading into his yard. He actually has propagated it into like a whole little row over on the side of his house. So he enjoys that. I wouldn't do that plant on this side of the house, but that's what I'm thinking of going and doing on the east side. Project number four. Now project five. I am not as clear on what we're doing over here. Really mostly what I've been thinking about is how are we getting this trellis out? <laughs> that's mostly. And then I have some ideas, but I'm not going to make the final call until after that trellis is out. And here's why. One, there is a very, very gorgeous old jasmine. And in order to get the trellis out, we got to like at the base. Now I'm not trying to kill it because I like it, but it might die in the process of this. So this is why I'm kind of torn on what we're going to go do. Yeah, that's kind of the main thing. I don't know. That's, that's my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts. Now, if you're thinking I would love some more vine ideas, there is another video I just did. So if you're interested in looking into more native vines, check this out. I will link it at the end. So next up, we need to measure the area, draw everything out, and then figure out what trellises we're ordering. Remember how when one of the other projects I said there's lots of quirky, fun things in this yard? It was very good that I measured. I didn't measure once. I measured twice. I measured three times. Actually, more measured four times. You might not have seen them all, but I did. Um, the sidewalks are different widths. So typically a lot of sidewalks are 36 inches. That one kind of is, the other one completely not. <laughs> so I was looking at trellises and a lot of the ones that would be really great to get are not gonna fit the one side. And even though we could have different vines, I would like the trellises in general to look the same for when they don't have vines on them. I found this set of arch trellises and they're a bit wider so they'll be able to clear both sides. Put the order in, we're getting them. And next up, we get to build trellises and tear stuff out and do all the projecty things. Okay, so let's get going on that. Okay, we got the boxes here and it is now time to attempt to build these. Allegedly, it's only supposed to take us 90 minutes to build one, so we'll see. Officially been about an hour and a half since we started this project and this project is only supposed to take 90 minutes 
and there's two of us, but it's also only supposed to be one person. So is the instructions that are wrong? Is it our lack of experience? Who's to say? Who's to say? Um, but like all large projects, everything just takes way longer than you think. So we shall carry on, we shall carry on, and we will see how we're doing. I've been looking at the area and there's a lot of coral honeysuckle, just like reaching like, is there something for us to grab onto? I'm gonna end up having to cut it back just to like get the trellis in, but I'm excited. We're moving along here. We have built the sides. We have built the top. There are not many pieces left, but the instructions say that we're supposed to dig the holes before putting the top on. So next up is we got to remove the narrow leaf yellow top, which is a native wildflower. And what coral honeysuckle is there, we're gonna cut it all back to the ground so we can see the ground. So we can start measuring out because we got to dig like three feet down. <laughs> ah! And we better measure correctly because once we get these posts in, we don't want to dig another, another three foot hole. But here's what I'm thinking. So what they suggest is you dig all four holes, but you know what I'm thinking is we're gonna dig two holes. We're gonna get this one in, get it where we want it because this will be the one closest to the house. And because the sidewalk was like a wonky size, we're gonna kind of come up close to the sidewalk and let the excess kind of be over this way. That's fine that it's not gonna be centered because we've got the roof line to watch out for. So we'll get this one set first get it so we're happy with it and then we can measure from there to get this side. My thought process, I have no experience with this. So who knows if it's right or wrong, but that's what we're going for. Hooray, huzzah. <laughs> so I changed the plan. I know we just said we're gonna do one thing, but honestly what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some twisty steaks that are for like tomatoes or whatever um, in the garden and we're gonna put them in first just to make sure we're really happy with where the four posts are gonna go before we start digging a three foot hole. This look a lot. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea, right? So let's do that.
Ben has to run to a thing. So we're pausing this for today. But it's a pretty good progress, right? Pretty good progress. So we'll pick this up tomorrow. And we're back. <laughs> we're refreshed and we're ready to go ahead and keep going with this project. First up, we need to dig these holes about three, four inches deeper. And then we need to start finishing putting together, fill the holes back up and build a whole another one. But I do believe it will go faster now that we kind of know what we're doing. Do you want to put it back there? Yeah, back over here. There's fine. Oh, it's is that this was actually very level. Yeah. I took the leveler to I it saw. and I was like, oh, look at that. Yeah. We got it perfect. I know, that's pretty impressive. Oh my gosh, it's like mud. Well, let's take it, if it's at 32, then let's get it to 36 flat. That's okay. where we go our goal. Oh, that's an amount. That's a good amount. You want to check it? Sure. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's a nice looking one. Yeah. Because if I go by just like where I feel anything, but then there's this like very loose mud that that post is going to go straight through. And then I get to like 36. Mm -hmm. <sighs> nice. There we go. That's a good one. Let me check. Oh my god. There we go. Oh my god, this is perfect. What? How does that even seem like it's higher? Oh, I don't know. Like, oh, I don't Let's go ahead and try putting it in. Go. Oh, Jesus. I mean, it looks slightly lower, but now it's off. So here's the struggle right now is that there's, because we've hit basically the water table down below, water keeps flooding in. So even though Ben's taking out what, have, what should have dropped us two, four, six inches worth of material, we're making like no progress and i think what's happening is basically the sediment is getting up into the water it's particularizing so when i measure it shows we're better we're making progress but then what's happening is as soon as the posts go down it basically recompacts it and we've lost inches and inches that we just did so because we're doing a lot of work to basically be almost exactly where we were. The one we need to do a more on the whole, but just because it's like, you know, right now, but um, I don't know that we're really making any progress. And I'm wondering if over the next, because it looks like the post from yesterday has settled down a little bit deeper. I am thinking they are gonna settle another inch or so just because it's just such watery, mucky material, they're gonna kind of into place over time. <sighs> so that, that's, this is the update. Okay, we're gonna go back to digging.
That's why I don't want to be playing. Yeah. Victory! <laughs> We did it! Now if it's looking a little like uh, cuckoo cockeyed right now, that's yeah, that's because we haven't leveled it and finished screwing everything in. But we are very close, very, very close to getting one trellis made. So what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna add a light amount of water into this just to like recompact the soil so we can get as much of this in as possible. The project has turned into a construction site. <laughs> Okay, so this trellis is done. I've gone to the store. I have picked up plants. Oh wait, it looks better if I do this. Here you go. <gasps> yay, blue ocean morning glory or ocean blue morning glory. I always get it backwards, but you know which plant. But yay, it is time to plant. And the good thing is, is that our coral honeysuckles, they survive. So I don't need to buy any more, like I didn't need to buy any more coral honeysuckle. I just needed to get some ocean blue morning glory because the original plant's too far away from the trellis and we're not gonna work with that. So I got these two. We just need to dig a couple holes. I'm going to say the good thing about having that <laughs> post digger is it's going to make really fast work of this one gallon pot. I can like get that in really fast, don't you think? So let's dig that hole and get everyone settled so that they can start climbing up and making flowers. This was a challenging project. There were so many moving forward, go backwards, move forward, go backwards. But you know what? In the end, it was definitely worth it. I feel like this is going to bring in those big, bold blooms and it's just going to bring in beautiful wildlife and I'm excited. And if you really enjoyed seeing this project and you want to see the whole transformation as we go from total chaos to a cottage garden, check out this playlist right here. It has everything from the original plan to all the videos that take you through the different projects. And if you're really excited about trellises and want to learn more about native vines that can bring big, bold blooms, check out this video right here. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!